today we're looking at the most potent performance enhancing supplement on the market. If you're looking to get stronger, faster and have better power outputs, this is what you want. Your mom thinks it's steroids, you think it's SARMs, but in fact it's creatine. And it's not just creatine, it's creatine cream. So today's study is coming from Canada and the title is repeated application of a novel creatine cream improves muscular peak and average performance or average power in male subjects. So I'll just give you a quick little rundown on the subject or the kind of methods they used in this study and a kind of a, uh, an overview of what they did. So you can get a little bit better understanding when we get to the discussion of what we think and some of the results that I will tell you. So we had a double blind placebo control study. So basically what that means is both groups were separate from each other. They um, neither knew if they were getting the real uh, the real stuff or they were getting placebo. So no one knew what they were getting. We had 123 subjects. Uh, we had kind of two different allotments of testing here. So we had a once-off acute treatment of the uh, creating cream versus oral cream. And this was broken down into two different groups, which was a high-dose and a low-dose group. So for the creating cream, we had 3.5 mils and we had a 7 mil group, okay? um then after this there was a seven day loading period which was tested uh so they had their performance tested before and their performance tested after okay so then it was loaded for seven days there was four different groups in this seven day loading so what we had was, was a oral creatine plus creatine cream we had oral creatine plus placebo cream we had oral placebo creatine plus creatine cream and then we had a placebo oral creatine and placebo creatine cream so what was measured was a unilateral uh, isokinetic uh, leg extension machine. What they did was five sets of 15. There were 60 seconds rest in between each set. And in between legs, there was a 10 minute rest period. So all participants had a familiarization session before any of the testing was done. And there was a 15 sets of maximum leg press or leg extension were carried out just to familiarize the subjects with the kind of custom designed piece of equipment that they use for this study. So finally, the measurements that were taken that the uh, testers used was peak power, average power, and finally was uh, muscle fatigue index, which was simply just they took the a couple of different average contractions and then got a percentage of these to measure fatigue compared to the subject's own prior testing results. So onto the a little the kind of interpretation of the results from Fitzy. Okay. So some of the results from the study, in terms of acute application, so this is just applying the ointment or the cream once, um, we see differences, but we see no significant differences uh, between oral creatine and topical creatine. We also see no differences between the oral and topical creatine and just the placebo groups. So we're seeing no significant effect here um, in terms of across sets or across applications, which is quite interesting. When we then look at the repeated application, we see significant effects for men. So we see in a set by application by leg comparison, so that's uh, when we're applying the ointment to a particular leg and when we're comparing it to a placebo being applied to that particular leg, in certain sets, uh, we see that topical creatine ointment cream when it's applied over the course of seven days. So they're continually applying it and they're kind of building up that that pool of creatine in the muscle tissue, we are seeing a significant effect there. That's pretty much the only significant effect we see in all of the testing. Uh, when we, like, to move on to the discussion now, right, and try and get away from the results a small bit, we spoke earlier about the, the no significant effect in acute applications being quite interesting. Why I think it's quite interesting and why we might have certain hang-ups or certain questions about the study is we know that in studies of this kind when we've looked at at oral creatine intake in males and in females that we see significant effects in uh, average power output and peak power output in testing similar to this so in isokinetic knee extension machines we see that the male data so the fact that we got a significant finding for males and we didn't see a significant finding for females we know from previous studies that that's not uncommon 
so we see females will usually hold a higher proportion of creatine in the muscle so they're sealing so they're quite a bit closer to their kind of ceiling of maximal creatine retention um, and then obviously the opposite is true for males I think if we were to look at this study and we were to look at kind of uh, areas where they could go into their discussion a small bit more probably talking about the absorption pattern of the creatine and how the creatine is getting into the muscle tissue is obviously going to be the most important thing so the advantage obviously will be that when we're taking creatine cream and applying it to a particular muscle we get to choose which muscle will hold more creatine within it the issue with taking on oral creatine as a supplement will be that uh, for the entire skeletal musculature or for the entirety of our skeletal musculature we will hold more water in that and then it will lead to people feeling kind of puffy or feeling like they're holding more water that's actually a, a kind of advantage for strength of power athletes but for some people they just don't like it there's the other fact that taking on powdered creatine can lead to some sort of kind of digestional tract or gi tract uh issues or discomfort the dosages of oral creatine they're taking in this study were incredibly high so i think Owen was saying somewhere around seven grams three times per day uh, which is 21 grams a day and usually most of the studies we're seeing which lead to kind of strength and power increases would be around five grams a day so if we were able to get a creatine cream that worked and we could apply it to particular areas of skeletal musculature whereby we wanted to increase peak power and we wanted to increase average power output so say for a cyclist you might want it in their quadriceps or like particularly vastus lateralis that would be very very advantageous because they're not going to hold on to that extra water and therefore extra weight uh, over their entire system they would just hold on to that increased uh, creatine pool and extra water in those particular muscle units so I just my main thing with this one right is first of all I think it looks really interesting I actually really like the um the concept of this and then if we were to you know take them at face value and if someone repeated this I would be very interested in actually trying topical creatine for yeah. something like squats or something it just genu- it does look interesting and it's interesting that the results are are what they are uh one thing for me right though was uh this is um and so there was some grant funding for this but there was also some industry funding from this from a, a company called Delvira Inc right and they have developed some topical transdermal technology I don't know what in particular it is I don't know the specifics of their technology but just optically right from the outside right it looks very strange that from yeah. the results the oral group didn't get any benefits which we know and, and they mentioned this themselves in the study that uh oral creatine very very often does produce results and i'll they give a few kind of airy fairy reasons um could be just a sample size they're not particularly well resistance trained due to sleep nutrition lack of training history or genetics you know but um it just looks funny i think from the outside that a a new technology in a study on from what we know is the first of its kind looks at um a topical application of creatine and magically only gets results compared to what we know already were it just looks funny i just i just can't not acknowledge that i just don't i think it's just funny now obviously at the end they're like yeah 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 you know there's no conflict of interest and they had no interference in publishing the results but look we look i'm not saying they did anything absolutely not i have no basis to say that but it just looks the optics of that situation looks incredibly weird yeah and i think like the optics there's always going to be issues right because like the beef protein industry wants beef protein to look like the best kind of protein so it will obviously fund studies that look at beef protein and like muscle protein synthesis so if you're looking for a university or like any sort of legible research group to do research on your product you're going to have to like fund them or in some way incentivize them to do the study so then your product like you can see if it's working or not and it's just not you doing the test so like it's awkward for everyone right uh but this study isn't like i think this study more than anything else will just open the doors right so if you look at other high level creatine studies they're taking actual creatine data from the muscle so they'll do a muscle biopsy they'll do like so they'll actually take a piece of muscle tissue and test the level of creatine in it um and so they'll take more invasive measures and the interesting thing that 
because this is all so new, they wouldn't have been able to get ethical approval for doing that. So taking a muscle biopsy is like cutting open someone's skin. So whatever the muscle is, you'll just cut it a small bit with a scalpel. You'll stick something similar to a biro into them. You'll suck a piece of, of muscle fiber up into the biro and then there's a little clicker and it will just sever that piece of muscle tissue and you'll pull it out and you'll be left with a little column of muscle tissue. Obviously, that's very invasive. So a lot of ethics boards won't approve that because if it's like Dara and Gurf's secret muscle ointment serum that nobody's ever proved, a university ethics board simply won't give you ethics to start pulling chunks of muscle out of people because your product has never been proven and it's not been proven that you need to do this kind of invasive treatment. So this study um, is similar to other studies that we looked at in the past. It's more opening the doors. It's more opening people's eyes. It's the kind of preliminary study process. It's probably the first study in a PhD or whatever that might be. Um, but it's interesting, right? And these are interesting things to look at because they have wider applications. Like there are probably, hopefully there'll be more studies done on this in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, like it, it, it definitely, I'd like to see this repeated and uh, it's just worth noting at the moment. It doesn't look like you can buy any creatine cream. So it doesn't look like you can go buy it on the market yet yeah so i would say judging by the results of this study it won't be too long before you can actually buy that um i would definitely be interested in trying it though um for like it's just strange you know it does look strange that the oral consumption of creatine didn't produce any results so it'd be interesting if someone who kind of independent got you know a, a, a vat of this creatine cream and then try to repeat the analysis with athletes or something like that or more well-versed athletes because they did have a large subject size there really isn't anything they could have done in particular to kind of jimmy the results realistically. Like, you know, they, they either, if you if you have to take everything they say at face value or else you can't start questioning people's results on, you know, on yeah. papers. Like, so... In terms of I their study design, there. I think it was it was very good, you know. Like, things yeah. looked robust. It was double blind, so both the subjects and the people administering the tests were blinded. Like, you know, the, the conflict here comes from the, the funding, you know, and that's like it's quite cynical on our behalf, but you have to look at things like this when you look at them, um, or when you try to do some analysis of a paper, you have to look at who's funding the paper, who comes to benefit from it. Uh, like, if I say like this, the study design of this was relatively robust in comparison to a lot of papers we'd look at fairly regularly. Yeah, like these people, even you can tell from like the language, the setup of the paper, it was well written, the people who were well versed in in you know creating papers like this and publishing results um which is probably what which is probably one of the reasons that were obviously chosen for this you know if if a, a, a you know a company is going to give funding they're obviously going to look for the people who are the most adept at providing publishing papers and stuff and who are the most you know who are clearly capable of it like if you if last week's one we did was the last paper review we did was on um was cluster sets you know uh no bfr and pap and like even reading that paper was it was kind of difficult like it wasn't that well written it was laid out mm. some information was missing whereas if you compare it to this paper for example um just the quality information as how it's presented and the level of detail you know it should read very clearly uh bar scientific language but in terms of like what happened and what was used this is very detailed everything's laid out step by step you know so if one, someone wants to go repeat this they could do it very easily from this paper with just a little bit of um jimmying i suppose or a little bit of a uh, you know adaption for themselves absolutely yeah stand by for seek a strength topical creatine cream <laughs> so as always thanks very much for watching any opinions comments all that good stuff throw them down in the comments below uh if you want information around our coaching around our programs go to seekastrength.com and if you want more stuff like this we have loads of stuff on our instagram just at Seek Your Strength, and obviously, we have plenty more YouTube videos for you to look at too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys.